What is up, family? So I'm actually posting pretty, pretty close to the last time I posted. I'm pretty proud of myself. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying, honestly. And today's one of those days where I probably could have not made video, but I really need to share all of this that is going on right now. So, you know, like the whole adage, the old saying of when it rains, it pours, it is never truer than when you, I don't know, probably everybody has those moments, right? Which is why there's an old saying that goes with it. So it's definitely quote unquote pouring around here <laughs> right now. Let me tell you a story. Let me just tell you the story. Let We'll just go through the whole thing. So Friday, last Friday, today is, what is today? Today's Tuesday. So last Friday, I had to go up to Ohio to have my, uh, I had LASIK. I think I said I had eye surgery. So I had LASIK um, two weeks ago. So, well, almost two weeks ago. So last Friday, I had to go up to Ohio for them just to like do a recheck, just kind of check on how things were going, make sure everything looked fine, that everything was healing. And it is, I am currently seeing 2020, which is awesome, um, without my contacts or glasses. So that is very rad. I'm super excited about that. Everything seems to be fingers crossed, knock on wood. Everything seems to be going well. And I'm, I'm really glad that, uh, I let Ryan talk me into it, but so I was gone most of the day. I didn't get back until like, I don't know, two o'clock or whatever. So they, uh, Ryan actually met with a guy that is haying for us, currently haying for us. You can see behind me there, they have cut everything that is currently haying for us. He came out, looked over the place with Ryan and my neighbor who has a side-by-side -side, came and just kind of drove him around the farm just to kind of give him the lay of the land so he could see everything. Well, my neighbor texted Ryan later on that evening that he had seen three of our beef cows out down by the creek, that the hot fence was down and that the beef cows were out. Not a huge deal, in my opinion, at the time. They get out occasionally. You know, I've had them get out before. They don't typically go anywhere. They stay. They either come up to the barn or they just stay down by the creek. It's been pretty warm, so I figured, okay, well, they'll just stay down by the creek. We'll get to them. Saturday, we had farmer's markets, so we were gone all day, and I didn't get a chance to get to them. Again, not really worried about it because where are they going to go? We have 87 acres. I mean... Yeah, where are they going to go? They've got water and food here. Like, they're not going to go anywhere. So I'm not too worried about it. Um, Sunday, I take a jaunt around and look for them. I don't see them. But again, I'm not too crazy worried. It was hot. It was like 89 degrees. I think it got up to like 92. So I figured that they were down in the creek, hunkered down. No big deal. I'll get to them. Um, you know, whatever. Yesterday, okay, so let me just add to this the whole thing. I have had a flat tire on the quad, the four-wheeler, for <laughs> like a month now. And I've been driving around with this flat tire. It won't even hold air anymore. So driving this thing, steering this thing, literally takes all of my strength because it's had a flat tire. But I haven't had a chance to get the tire off and get it into the tire place to get a new one put on. Um, so yeah, so I'm driving all around this farm on Sunday, uh, trying to find them and I'm like, forget it. I can't do this with the quad. So yesterday, which was Monday, again, I still don't see them, but I'm not seeing like any signs, you know, I checked all the fences and I didn't really see any signs of anyone like getting out. No, you know, big heavy manure load or whatever. Um, I have three of them, three of the red heifers came up to the barn here. So I got them in, they're in there, but I don't see the other five, two of the bottle babies and then three of the other red uh, heifers that were left over after we took some to the processor. So yesterday, which was Monday, I had to go make a delivery in Fort Knox, which is like an hour and a half away. First, I had a vet appointment for Ivory. I hope you can follow along. Maybe I need to put like one of those timeline things down at the bottom of the screen here to just kind of like give you an idea of this timeline because it's a bit of a disaster. But first, I had an appointment at the vet for Ivory. If you remember, I talked about her medical issues so that we've been dealing with. So I had to take her to the vet. Well, the vet wasn't 
ready uh, for her. They had an emergency come in. I wish they would have just called me and told me, but it's no big deal. So they said, we'll just leave her and then we'll call you in a couple hours when she is ready. They were going to do some blood work and stuff. Um, but I had to go to Fort Knox, which is completely the opposite direction. So they said, that's fine. She can just stay all day. She's a good girl. So they just let her hang out basically all day. So as long as I'm back by five. So I go to Fort Knox to make a delivery and I didn't realize that the delivery that I was making was actually on base, like actual Fort Knox, like Fort Knox, the army base. So I go to the gate and I'm like, you know, what do I, what do I, what am I doing here? So I said, I'm just making a delivery. And the gate guy looked at me like I was insane, of course. And he's like, you can't come on base. And I'm like, okay, what do I do? He's, you know, telling me, well, you need to get your person to meet you. And they're not home. I had talked to her and she was out of, you know, out of the area. So then he finally says, okay, well, you need to go to this next gate and go to the visitor center and try and get a pass. So half an hour down the road, basically get this pass, make the delivery. I had promised the kids that we would go to this park that's on the way. It's a Bernheim, which is, they have these cool for forest giants and this other like park. So by this time we have like 20 minutes to play at the park, but I didn't want to disappoint them because it's not their fault, you know, blah, blah, blah. So we go to the park, we play for like 20 minutes, get everybody loaded back up in the car, go get get to the vet, literally got to the vet at like 10 to five, like just in time, which is great. It's fine. There also was a family there that was grieving for a pet. It was like, just, you know, just one of those moments. Like it just, I'm crying, listening to them, the vet tech that came in, um, the assistant that came in, she's crying. I like, it was just, it was not, it was not pretty, not good. I had had the kids in there originally. I ended up taking them outside and putting them in the car with the air conditioner on just because I didn't, you know, they were being noisy and whatever. But yeah, so it was just, it was just really like a bad situation. So we got Ivory, got her home. So I get home and my neighbor is here or comes up. I can't remember what he came up for. Something came up, asked me if I'd found the cows. I said, no. So he's like, okay, we'll hop in the side by side and we'll go cruise around because my tire was flat on the quad and he had taken the tires off the quad so that Ryan could take him to the place to get the tires changed on Thursday when he's off of work. <laughs> Cause so I have no quad. So he's like, come on, we'll go hop around. So we literally drove around the farm and walked. I mean, we got out and walked all over the place for probably two and a half hours. And these cows are nowhere to be found. They're not here. Like they're not here, but we didn't see really any place that they had like got out. We didn't see any big tracks, any big, like, you know, tracks of poop or anything like that. So couldn't like, it just was blowing my mind. I didn't know what to think. So he gave me a couple of phone numbers of people to call. I had one number of the neighbors. So I called them this morning and left messages. Um, hadn't heard from anybody. So he came up again this morning. Oh, and then this morning when I go out to like do chores, uh, the tire in my car is flat. So I have a quad with no tires on it and a flat tire in my car. <laughs> so, so he texts me this morning, my neighbor, and he says, I fixed the tire on your quad. You can drive it now, which was awesome that he just came up and did that. And he plugged the tire on the Toyota. I mean, honestly, like I can't even, you know, I've said this before how people said like, oh, you know, people might be mean to you or anything because you've been, you're from California and you moved to Kentucky. The exact opposite is true. The exact opposite is true. Everybody has just been so kind, you know, and just helpful. My neighbors have been amazing and great. And everybody that we have met and talked to has just been so welcoming and great. So, and I know I've been here two years now. And so that has kind of like worn off. But honestly, this is why I moved to Kentucky because this state is the kind of state that I used to live in. This is how California used to be when I was a kid. And at least my town used to be. And, uh, um, yeah, so I digress, but quad tires are fixed. The Toyota tires are fixed. I told him that I had called, you know, the two guys that he, we had talked about calling, one from a farm over here and one from a farm over here, said I hadn't heard from him. And he said, well, let me give them a call just because they don't know your number. So he called them. 
sure enough, one of the guys says, oh yeah, I think uh, Wayne over here, you know, like four farms over, uh, used, had those cows. He said, is it three red ones and two black ones? And my neighbor said, yep. And he said, yeah, they were in so-and-so's barn. They were in Wayne's barn. So we hop in his truck and drive over to Wayne's farm. On the way there, we got a call from the other guy that I had called and, you know, he confirmed, yep, they're there. So, you know, we got to, we get them. <laughs> but Ryan has the truck, <laughs> so I can't haul the stock trailer. <laughs> And the guy's not home. So at some point today, this was this morning. So at some point today, when the girls wake up from their naps, I have to drive over to this guy's house because a thing here, it seems, is that you just drive over to people's houses. You just pop in. <laughs> so I've got to pop in over here and uh, talk to this guy about getting my cows. Maybe my neighbor will drive uh, my stock trailer and we can go pick them up. But... <laughs> We can't, he doesn't think he can get his stock, the stock trailer with the cows up my driveway. So we're going to have to drop the cows at the bottom of the driveway. And then I'm going to have to lead them up the driveway and put them back. Meanwhile, so this is all happening. Meanwhile, I have all my regular stuff that has to be done. Like, you know, cleaning the house, doing laundry, feeding my children, getting my children down for naps, um, milking my cows, milking my goats, processing that milk. I mean, I can't just like milk them and then that's it. You know, we've got to strain it and put it in jars or containers and in the freezer. And I have orders to pack for deliveries. I, the, the guys are here haying. They've been haying this whole farm the past like four days. So just managing that. And it's not been too bad, but you know, he wants to know this, that, or the other thing, which is totally, it's fine. I, if you're watching this, Steve, it's totally fine. I'm here for you. Um, so <laughs> I've got that. And then I've got like chickens everywhere. I've got a schooner full of small layer chickens. I've got the big layer chickens running around. The ducks are in the medium brooder. I've got a brooder, small brooder full of guineas and a small brooder full of baby chicks. I have chicks in the incubator this, that are supposed to hatch Friday. So I need to get one of the small brooders cleaned out, which means that I need to get the other big brooder cleaned out for the guineas to go in. And all of these things need to be watered and fed and my children need to be watered and fed throughout the day. And at some point I need to be watered and fed throughout the day. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't, I can't even, I can't, I can't even. Oh, and we're homeschooling. So I've got the homeschooling thing, you know, that we're trying to add on to that. Luckily, we've been a little low key with the homeschooling. Um, I'm officially starting next week. So I haven't been like, crazy about that but yeah oh oh yeah and to top it all off I've got you know 1200 pounds of beef in my freezer that I need to get sorted out and packed into boxes to deliver to customers plus we have farmer's market again on Saturday so I've got to get everything prepped for that so yeah so that is my um world today this is all like you know happening right now so that is my world today so I'm just taking my list and I'm doing one small thing at a time. I just watered the sheep and now I am going to go and turn off the water in the brooder because it's probably on and overflowing. And I need to pack up, um, whew, I need to pack up some orders. So let's get that done and then we'll check another thing off of our list. All right, so I went over to the guy's house where the cows are. Uh, earlier today and he was not there even though he was supposed to be I've called like everybody to try and get this guy's phone number so I'm driving over again it's the evening the kids are in bed my neighbor actually came up and is sitting at the house just you know to make sure Ryan's still at work so just to make sure that you know everything is fine so I'm popping over here again because everybody is sort of like how like crazy getting hay raked and up and bailed and whatever because the rainstorm that was only supposed to be a little rainstorm is now a bit of a bigger rainstorm uh, coming tomorrow. So everybody's kind of frantically out getting their hay done, whatever. I don't hay. I don't know. But I know that the, the guy that's doing our hay was like, you know, we got to get this done. So anyways, so that's where supposedly he might have been all day long 
and therefore I was not able to get a hold of him. So now I'm going over here again. Hopefully he's here this evening to try and hook up with him and get something figured out. What I'm hoping to do, he has a stock trailer sitting out front. So I'm really hoping that I can pay him to bring the cows over for me. Um, it would just really be the easiest scenario and I would be happy to do it if he could, uh, if he could do that. So I'm going to try and talk him into it, uh, if I can, but yeah. So anyways, we're heading over here. Let's see if he's home. So it's actually the next day. I'm gonna give you a little update on the whole beef cow situation. So talked to the guy, <clears throat> actually I talked to his wife and she called him and I talked to him over the phone and uh, he said that they're fine and I obviously apologized profusely, but he said, come get them anytime. So I am gonna wait. <laughs> I can't back the livestock trailer up. So I'm gonna wait until Thursday. Um, today's Wednesday. I'm gonna wait till Thursday when Ryan gets is home from work and then we can go get them tomorrow. He said they're fine over there. I'll give them some money just to say thank you. So I will take you along with me when I do that. But that's tomorrow and I didn't wanna wait to get this video out. So that load up and everything will probably be on the next video. Um, what I'm doing today is I am actually locking down uh, an incubator today. I have like 30 eggs in there, some like all sorts of different random colors of eggs that I got from a friend and then some of ours. So what I'm doing, I'm going to lock down the incubator. But if you've ever incubated eggs, you know that when the chickens, when the chicks hatch, the first one that hatches always like flops all around crazy and they just scatter the eggs all over. And I don't, I don't know what the solution is, but a couple of people that I have seen have made like little dividers, right? And they put like three eggs in each little section and that just keeps them from knocking around like too many of the eggs or whatever and, and preventing them from just scattering because when they scatter and they roll, they just, they stop hatching because the chicks get all like discombobulated and so they can't hatch as well. So um, what I'm doing is I'm just gonna take, I have this cardboard box right here. So I'm just gonna take this cardboard box and cut it up. I took the dimensions of the um, incubator. So I'm just gonna cut it up into like a square and then make like little dividers. Think of like um, one of those things that you put Christmas ornaments in. It's got like little sections for each one. Basically, that's what I'm making. I think I'm gonna put like two eggs, two or three eggs in each section though. I'll have to see once I like get it all together uh, how many I'm gonna get an egg and <laughs> measure it all out. But I thought it would be a fun project for you to kind of follow along with. And then uh, we're supposed to hatch lockdown today and hatch on Friday. So I'll obviously take video of hatching. I'll probably put the beef pickup and the chicken hatching all together and then yeah, put that video out. But we'll get this situated and then we'll lock down the eggs together and get this in the incubator and see how it fits. So let's get this project done. Okay, so this is the length of the uh, incubator, but before I get any further in this project, I wanna make sure that it just fits in there. So I'm just gonna run in there, 
just kind of fit this, make sure that it's not too tall or anything in it, it'll work. So let's go check it out. Okay, so I've got my outer like thing that fits in there. So I kind of feel like I have two options here. I can either make pieces that like fit inside of each other so I can like cut like a little bit so it can fit down inside of each other. Hopefully that makes sense if it like, I don't know what the right word is. Like it intersects and they squish together or I can just make pieces and cut them. I don't know which one would be easier. I mean, cut, glue them, uh, tape them, not cut them. So I can make intersecting pieces that fit together or I can try and make individual pieces and just tape them. I think I wanna try the intersecting ones because then I can move it around a little bit. So I'm gonna try that and see how it goes. <laughs> we'll see, fingers crossed. Okay, well, it is very janky, but sometimes that's all you need, right? It doesn't matter. It's kind of like the nest boxes that I did for the rabbits. It was a freaking diaper box and it worked perfect. It was fine. They're cheap, they're free. I mean, honestly, it's free. And even if it only used, worked one time, as long as I have more diaper boxes, then it's fine. So this is a perfect, you know, work with what you have lesson. So. It is done. I even have a couple eggs in here. So I think I think I can put, I'll put two eggs in each section. Two, four, six, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 29, 30. That'll give me 30 eggs, which I don't think I have more than 30 eggs. Some of them, this middle ones, I can probably fit more, but 
I think I'm going to just do two in each section. So let's go get it in and get the eggs uh, in and lock down, get some water in the incubator and uh, yeah, get them all situated. in there than I thought so I am going to um, I'm gonna candle them and that way I can take out any that I know for sure aren't um, you know being incubated so I don't know if you'll be able to see any of this but I will take you uh, with me I do it in a dark room this is a little trick I've learned so an iPhone um, uh, flashlight and you use a toilet paper roll um, like this you put the toilet paper roll right over the flashlight or any type of flashlight and then you can just set your egg right on top and then you can see whether or not there is a cheeky in there and that one is pretty dark so I'm gonna call it a cheeky See if I can find one that is not. So I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not, but this egg, you can clearly see the light through it. There's nothing growing in there. That is not an egg that is fertile. Whereas this one, completely dark, that means that there is a chicky in there and it is growing. So that's good. So at this point in incubation, you should be able to see a clear like air sac and basically the whole egg should be solid. And that's pretty much means that there's a chick in there and it's gotten to at least this point. So <clears throat> I'm going to um, put these back in, get the lid on it. We are good to go. Uh, there was just under a dozen. I think there was like nine or 10 that there was nothing in there or there was something, but it clearly was not you know, like a solid, um, a solid check. So don't mind my messy office back here. This is like my catch all room. So, um, yeah, let's get these guys locked down finally. Okay. Well, that was a beautiful disaster and fun but it's done everything's locked down they are good to go um just a little update these are the little guys i picked up um i picked up the other day they are wyandots and um uh, buckeyes i got the buckeyes for ryan i thought he'd like that he really doesn't care but i pretended that he would care and so that was my justification for getting more chickens <laughs> after this hatch I'm done, I promise, <laughs> for the little while. We're done, we're done for a little while. I don't need any more chickens in this in this room. I need to get this room cleaned up. It's a disaster and I need it more organized because we're gonna start school pretty soon. And now that farmer's markets are picking up, I need to have all of my farmer's market stuff like situated, ready to rock, ready to go. So no more chicks. This is the last of them. They'll be moving out of here in a few weeks. And um, it's nice that summer is here because then I can put them outside pretty early uh, and I don't have to worry about it being too cold and uh, worrying about them. So anyways, I am, I'm gonna leave this video here. Thanks for hanging out with us today. I will follow up with you probably in just a few days. I'll have a new video of us picking up the cows and then uh, anything hatching out of this incubator. Hopefully, I mean, there was quite a few that were, you know, that looked like they were supposed to hatch. So hopefully my little chicken penitentiary, <laughs> my little chicken cells works and I will get a good hatch. But other than that, thanks for hanging out with us and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.
her too. One more and that's it. No, two more cows. No, there are only cows. Okay, so the resolution has happened. He actually was pulling up uh, or pulling out of the house just as I came home a little bit earlier and said that he would bring them over for us. Of course, I don't have any money for him, so I need to go over to his house tomorrow the next day and bring him some cash because I don't have any cash. Um, but they're back. They're here. There they are. They're going to go find their friends. And uh, yeah, hopefully they'll stay in now. <laughs> Anyways, so we're actually going to end this video here, and uh, yeah, I will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Say bye, Ella. Bye. Bye. Say bye, family. Bye, family. All right, Ella, why don't you walk to me, honey? Mommy, mm. you know what this is? This is an onion. Oh, yeah. Emma, stay right here, please. Look, they're happy to see each other. It does smell like an onion, doesn't it? Your friends are back! I think they missed it. You think they missed each other? Oh, look at that cute little baby cow. Mm-hmm. It's a cutie one. I think they're hungry. Smell this. They'll figure it out. They're happy to be back to each other.